Uh, my name is Claudia Bielinska and today here I'm with my colleague Martin Gill. Uh, so our presentation uh, will be divided and uh, we would like to uh, give you a very brief uh, introduction about CreoDIS platform, uh, what possibilities it brings, uh, what data uh, can, you, um, can you see on CreoDIS and uh, we'll show you also how to set up virtual machines. Okay, so um, our today agenda uh, for our webinar. Um, we have uh, five points uh, to cover. Uh, first of all, uh, Martin will um, tell you about CreoDesk platform architecture. Uh, then uh, I will tell you about available data collections, uh, both free and uh, paid VHR. Uh, then we will move to CreoDesk platform. Uh, I will show you how to use CreoDesk tools such as EO Browser and EO Finder. And then uh, Martin will show you how to set up virtual machines. Uh, our last point will be Q&A session. And um, we also hope uh, that you will have uh, questions uh, during the webinar. Our colleague uh, from uh, support, Dominic, is waiting for your um, questions uh, on chat. So whenever you have a question, please uh, write it uh, down or you can also wait until the uh, end of our webinar so you can also ask us questions um, anytime uh, you have uh, something. Um, okay, so uh, Martin, uh, the floor is yours. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the first point, uh, CreoDIAS platform architecture. Uh, CreoDIAS consists of several modules. Uh, one is CreoDIAS portal. This is the entry point uh, for contacting us. You can register there, you can uh, create your resources, you can order resources, you can see uh, information about uh, both CreoDIAS and CloudFero. Uh, the other module is called uh, EO Finder. Uh, this is uh, the module that uh, is used to search for uh, satellite products. Uh, EO Browser allows you to also visualize, visualize uh, some uh, satellite products and uh, use some scripts to, uh, to uh, filter and uh, to change these visual visualizations. And uh, Cloud uh, and Cloud Dashboard uh, is uh, the place where you can uh, both create your resources like virtual machines, attach volumes, store your data, uh, create uh, private networks uh, and uh, um, change the way you can access uh, the, the virtual resources. And also there is a place for third-party applications. Uh, some of our users have their own uh, applications installed on our platform. Uh, the uh, satellite data is uh, stored on uh, in our EO data repository. Uh, it is stored in uh, public collections, so anybody can access uh, and see the, the products. And uh, some of the uh, products you can, uh, if they are offline, that is not available on our platform, but uh, can be downloaded uh, on on demand. Uh, they are stored. The, the, these products are stored in uh, in a big cache, uh, which is also uh, if you order some some products, uh, they uh, they are downloaded to the cache and uh, they are available for all uh, other users as well. Uh, and you can store your products also in your private uh, storage, uh, uh, so-called here private collections, so that it will be they will be available uh, only for you. So you can uh, make some processing of uh, satellite products and store the results on your private storage. You can uh, search in various uh, uh, methods, uh, search for for certain products. You can access the uh, satellite products uh, and all the products that you store on 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 your private collections as well you can uh, you can access them using various protocols like nfs s3 and http and you can also use uh, uh, our sentinel uh, our partner sentinel hub 
uh, and uh, using WMS, WMTS. So uh, on the right, there is uh, summarizing uh, of uh, our architecture. So the, the whole infrastructure is based on uh, open source uh, um, software called OpenStack. Uh, the um, uh, virtual machines are uh, uh, located on uh, servers, uh, so-called computes, and uh, your data um, is stored on uh, the storage that is uh, managed by uh, another open source uh, software called CEF. And uh, some of the data you can process using our internal uh, function as a service uh, uh, processors. Uh, the data can be both stored on block storage, so the storage that you can attach to your virtual machines and format with uh, your chosen uh, uh, file system, and also on object storage. And on object storage, you can mm, you can use uh, access uh, uh, with S3 or uh, uh, OpenStack Swift protocol. And you can also create your virtual uh, networks inside your domains and make backups, of course, of, uh, of your systems. Uh, our virtual machines are divided into, that is flavors of our virtual uh, machines are divided into several uh, groups uh, called EO1, EO2, uh, and also uh, you can choose from various uh, sizes. Uh, they both, uh, the sizes are both dependent on number of V cores and RAM and also SSD uh, network storage, which is attached to the, um, to the, to the virtual machines that are created uh, from this, using these flavors. So these are the basic, uh, sets of um, our virtual machines uh, flavors. Some of them are based on Intel uh, processors and some of uh, AMD. And also, uh, you can also use uh, virtual machines with GPU. Some, uh, that is, we have a flavor called GPU medium. And uh, some of the flavors are also equipped that is the images are equipped with Arch, Arc GIS. Uh, you need to uh, pay additional license because this is uh, paid software, but you can install it uh, from our uh, repository of our images. And they are also uh, so-called dedicated servers. That is, uh, these servers are equipped with bigger amount of uh, cores and bigger amount of uh, both RAM and, uh, and uh, SSD and VME storage. And also uh, some of these dedicated servers are equipped with uh, GPUs as well. And uh, more details you can find on our page. So uh, please visit uh, uh, this link so that you can see uh, some more detailed information about about uh, our um, uh, virtual processing resources. So now uh, Claudia will tell you about uh, our data collections. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so, so data collections, uh, which you can find on the Creodeas platform. Um, I would say that we have a really plenty uh, plenty of data uh, you can uh, use. Uh, so first of all, as uh, probably uh, all of you know, that Creo Dias, uh is actually uh, was developed under the Copernicus uh, scientific program. Uh, so most of the data uh, which are uh, available on Creo Dias, uh those data come from uh, Copernicus um, Copernicus program, so uh, Sentinel mission. Uh, so um, these data are available for free. Uh, they are open and everyone can uh, make a use of them. Uh, we have uh, available um, data from Sentinel-1, uh, A and B, Sentinel-2, A and B, Sentinel-3, A and B. Uh, 
so both optical and uh, radar um, data sets. Um, also, um, they are on uh, different uh, processing levels, uh, so you can um, use uh, processing level 1A or 1B and uh, as follow 2A to B. And also uh, you can uh, make a use of uh, raw data, uh, which are directly coming from satellites. We see that uh, some of our customers are using raw data, some of our customers uh, are using uh, process data. Uh, so depending of the uh, purposes of your work and um, probably uh, your familiarity uh, with the data. Um, all of the data uh, from Sentinel, uh, they are on different, uh, different um, I would say, um, levels, actually resolution scale. Uh, so uh, the bands uh, which are uh, included in Sentinel, uh, they have 10 meters resolution, uh, 20 meters resolution and 60 meters resolution. And um, the, the time of the revisit of the um, Sentinel satellites is also um, different depending on the satellite. Um, we have also in our collection uh, data from Sentinel-5P. Uh, so uh, if you would like to um, make a use of this, uh, the, this data and to uh, measure, to monitor uh, the atmosphere, uh, the current situation uh, of the atmosphere, uh, this data um, are really uh, usable. Um, uh, in our data collection, we have also data from Landsat satellite, uh, so Landsat 5, 7 and 8. Uh, they are also um, archive data uh, starting from 84 and uh, until present. Uh, what else you can see here? NVSAT and SMOS data. That's not all. Uh, we have more. Uh, uh, within the Copernicus program, um, the special Copernicus services are provided. Uh, so we have, um, you can access the data uh, from those services like atmosphere service, emergency, land and marine. Uh, so through, um, these are data available through uh, protocols S3 or NS NFS um, protocol. Uh, if you are interested in uh, different uh, thematic uh, let's say layers, thematic data sets, uh, you can access them uh, one by one, you can um, download them or you can uh, simply open a virtual machine and use them in the software uh, on your virtual machines. Um, the other data collections which are available are digital elevation model and here you can see that uh, digital elevation model are coming from, um, are, um, coming from different um, as are available for different products, uh, Mabzin, SRTM, UDEM, Copernicus DEM. Uh, so as well, depending um, on what you're looking for. We have also uh, data from JSON3. Uh, these are the data from the Altimeter. Uh, let's, I would say that JSON3 is a kind of a precursor of uh, Sentinel-6. Uh, and that's uh, what I also wanted to add, that uh, we hopefully, we hope, that soon um, data from Sentinel-6 will be also available on Creodias. Uh, so we are really counting um, to see them uh, soon on our platform. Um, the other data collection which is available is S2GLC. Uh, this is Sentinel-2 Global Land Cover. Uh, these data sets uh, were produced, were developed, developed by um, Space Research Center, Polish Academy of Sciences. Uh, so this is the land cover um, of Europe. Uh, it was uh, actually done in 2017. Uh, so uh, these are the thematic layers. Uh, it was thematic classification based on the Sentinel-2 uh, satellite. Uh, so these are the data sets you can uh, access completely for free. Uh, you can download them or you can uh, access them uh, locally on virtual machines. But also in our uh, collection, in our um, data offer, uh, we have very high resolution uh, data sets. Uh, so starting from the uh, Chinese uh, satellite, uh, Zhilin-1, uh, then Kazakh, um, Kazakh satellite, Kazeosat, and then um, Korean mission, Comsat. Uh, these data sets have a completely different resolution in comparison to Sentinel. Uh, because here the uh, special resol resolution starts from uh, centimeters. So like CompSat uh, in panchromatic bands, it has uh, 40, uh, 40 centimeters. So this is really detailed resolution. Uh, 
uh, and the, revis the revisit time is also um, different because it's one uh, 1.4 days. So it's quite often on at the same point uh, on globe. But of course, uh, these are the very high resolution data sets and they are coming from commercial uh, satellite providers. So uh, these data are not available for free. Uh, you have to pay for this data. Uh, but of course, depending on the purposes of your work, sometimes uh, really detailed information is uh, really, really needed. Uh, if you would like to learn more about our data collections, uh, please visit uh, our website, Data Offer. Uh, or if you would like to get more information on Sentinel data, please visit ESA uh, Sentinel site where you can uh, learn more about uh, particular uh, satellites and uh, data which are coming from um, these satellites. Okay, so now I would like to uh, invite you uh, for a short introduction to our tools, EO Browser and EO Finder. So we will move to uh, EO Browser and Finder. Okay, uh, so when you enter the CreoDias platform, uh, CreoDias website, uh, here you can uh, see um, in the tools menu, EO Browser and EO Finder. Um, of course, uh, uh, these are the tools which are really helpful for data uh, searching and data downloading. Uh, we can see that uh, some of our users are uh, using uh, our virtual machines uh, to download the data, actually to access the data and to process the data on virtual machines. But some of the users are only using those tools like browser and finder to download the data to a computer and processes the, process them in their own environment. Uh, so, um, if you would like to uh, use the full functionality of your finder, you have to be logged in user. Uh, so the best uh, idea is first of all to uh, register yourself here uh, using the registration button and then you can create your own uh, account and then access uh, the tools of course for free and download the data. So I will log in to my user account and then I will move uh, to tools. Uh, so first of all I will show you EO browser. So EO Browser, as the name says, it's for browsing the data. Uh, so depending on your loca location, you will be located uh, on the point where are you now. So we are in Warsaw. So here you can see the base map of Warsaw. And uh, here in this field, uh, we have to uh, indicate the data which are we are looking for. So uh, here we have the full list of our collections of uh, um, freely available data. So Landsat data, Sentinel data, uh, also NVSAT and S2 GLC Europe. Uh, I would like to see the data from uh, Sentinel 2A. So I will just um, click this data on. And then uh, we will search the data. Uh, we will find a place on the globe which we would like to see the data from. Um, so we can just zoom in on zo or zoom out on the map, or we can also enter the name of the place here. Um, here you can also see uh, the other possibilities of um, database maps. Uh, but what is also interesting that here in the um, browsing, let's say configuration panel, you can also indicate the cloud coverage. Uh, I think it's uh, very important because, of course, we would like to see as uh, much clear uh, image as possible. So the best would be uh, lowest percentage of cloud cover. I will uh, leave 10% here. Then we have to select time range. So the time when the data was um, when the data was um, collected. Uh, so we can indicate here uh, years, month months or dates, um, years, days, sorry. Okay, uh, so let's choose the date. I will start from December 3rd and I will finish um, today. Here you can see uh, great, uh, great days. Uh, so um, these are the days which are uh, indicating when of indicating when the satellite uh, was, um, was here um, moving around the globe. Uh, at this place where we are now. Okay, so then I will uh, go to the search place and I would like to show you today Madrid. 
I'm sure this is uh, now a very popular place and uh, most of you probably has already seen the data from Madrid, but let's uh, check it. So let's move to Spain, to Madrid. Uh, so we are here and now let's search the data of Sentinel-2 from Madrid. Uh, so, so here we got the res results of uh, the data collection uh, from Sentinel-2. Uh, so of course we have we can see the um, cloud coverage and uh, not cloud coverage but snow coverage uh, in Madrid. Uh, but let's see if we can see also um, the other data sets uh, when there were no when there was no snow. So it was December. Okay, so we can also see the data uh, without snow. Um, I would like to see the data from this area. Uh, okay, here we have even 0.0. .0 uh, percent of, of cloud coverage. I will uh, make a pin. Uh, so I will, this will be pinned to my favorite items. And I will also see another day uh, of this collection. So uh, here, a uh, third of uh, January. And then we will go to visualizing the data. Uh, when you visualize the data, uh, you can use here different band combinations. So it can be visualization in true color bands. So here we uh, use uh, band three and uh, four and uh, two. It can be scene classification. It can be false color, false color, color indicating urban um, areas and DVI. So um, so environmental, uh, I would say friendly indicator, moisture index, um, SWIR, NDVI, so water and NDSC, uh, so snow. Uh, I will leave this uh, true color um, visualization, but I will also go to my pins to see the snow cover around the Madrid. So you can see here Madrid covered in snow. And uh, when I will go again to my pins, I can compare those images. So I will click this option compare. And then I will click split. So here, just using uh, this tool, I can see Madrid covered in snow, and also Madrid without snow. So it's really nice and quick tool uh, to visualize the data and to uh, maybe present it during some presentation. Uh, but also, if you like the data and uh, you would like to save it, you can download the data. It's not going to be saved uh, in all bands, uh, like the completely full Sentinel data, but it will be downloaded and saved as an, uh, just a normal image file. Okay, so... This will look like this. Okay, uh, so browser, a uh, really quick uh, tool for browsing. Then we will move. Then we will move to um, EO Finder. So again, from the tools menu, we choose EO Finder. So EO Finder um, is a more advanced tool uh, for. Uh, finding the data and downloading the data. Uh, so here the download looks differently because uh, if you download the data from here, you download the complete uh, folder with the Sentinel data with all of the bands and all of the metadata. Uh, so you can uh, use some um, remote sensing software, EO software uh, to process the data. Okay, so um, let's maybe uh, stay around the Europe and find some place here in Europe. Uh, so first of all, here in the search criteria, we can indicate the name of the place. So it can be Warsaw, it can be Madrid, or as it's written here, it can be even winter in Quebec. So we will receive imagery of uh, winter in Quebec. Uh, or if we have already uh, found some data and we have uh, the ID or the uh, name of the path of the data, we can enter it here. Then we mm, enter here observed uh, time. So when the satellite was actually acquiring the data uh, or when the data were published uh, in our, um, let's say, repository. We can indicate here position, we can indicate here cloud cover and uh, of course collection. So uh, let's start from the um, published time. 
I will uh, search for the data starting from December and uh, until today. Then the cloud cover, uh, let's say 10%. I would like to see the data from Sentinel-2 and I will indicate level of processing 2A. Um, and that's all uh, what I will indicate here in the search criteria. Then we can, uh, we can uh, zoom to the map and uh, point the place uh, from the data which we are looking for, or we can uh, write, uh, we can, sorry, um, draw polygon selection here. We can uh, point uh, the name, uh, we can point the place. We can also upload polygon. So uh, if, you have, if you have a vector file, you can um, upload it here. So I will use polygon selection to find the data of my interest. Uh, so let's see uh, maybe how Italy looks uh, these days. So I will draw a polygon around Venice and then I will click search button. So here we got a full list of the results. Uh, we can see that we have 0% of cloud cover, 5%, uh, 7%. Um, so I have just uh, clicked uh, one of the data uh, to see how it looks. So here we, here we have just a small preview uh, of the data set. And uh, from this point, uh, we can download the data. We can receive some information about the data. And um, here also uh, you receive the um, metadata information, uh, so complete information about the uh, Sentinel um, data sets, uh, which are uh, displayed here. Um, so I will say that this is really a quick and um, user-friendly uh, tool for browsing the data and from the, for downloading the data. Uh, you can add data uh, to your cart, order them, and then download them to your computer. Okay, so uh, I think this will be all about our tools. And now, now Martin will tell you uh, more about um, virtual machines configuration. Okay, <clears throat> so I will now share my screen. Uh, first of all, uh, you need to enter uh, our customer portal to uh, to log in. Uh, and uh, I assume you already registered. If not, please register to our Claudius EU. Uh, I will log in now with my test credentials. Uh, When logged in, uh, I can uh, both see uh, some uh, various information on this portal or go to the uh, dashboard where I can create my virtual resources. So uh, I go to Tool and choose Cloud Dashboard. And this uh, moves me to another page. This is uh, called uh, Horizon. Uh, this is the dashboard of OpenStack, uh, uh, OpenStack Cloud. And uh, I can choose both uh, OpenID Connect and uh, Keystone Credentials. Uh, uh, Keystone Credentials uh, uh, is uh, in this, if you use Keystone Credentials, you need to uh, put the name of your uh, domain. So uh, in my case, it would be cloud 02722 and username uh, John, John Doe at cloud and put a uh, password here. But the easier way is to use open ID. Uh, so instead of um, putting password here, I can use uh, open ID connect and click connect. And then because I was logged in to uh, Crodia's uh, EU, I, I moved directly to the uh, OpenStack dashboard. 
So in this dashboard, first of all, uh, I need to check which project I uh, chose uh, because uh, by default, there is one project chosen. In my case, it is Cloud uh, 02722 project with EO. But when I uh, uh, open this menu, I can see that there are also other projects available. So these are other projects. So I can move from one to another. And uh, uh, among these projects, uh, the, the resources uh, are separated, so they don't see each other. So you can, for instance, create uh, various projects for for your customers for, uh, or for your other users, and they do not interact uh, with each other. So let's uh, stay with this project with EO. Uh, and uh, the main uh, dashboard is overview. You can see uh, how many instances you uh, are using, uh, how many vCPUs and RAM you, you have been using. In my case, this is empty project. So only I can, you can see that the uh, three floating IPs um, uh, attached to this project and some security groups. So uh, first of all, let's uh, see the network. Uh, the network topology allows you to see in graphical way uh, the um, resources that you have already assigned to your project. Uh, the important uh, information is uh, if you have uh, routers available because uh, uh, as you can see, there, are, there is private network, uh, one called private network uh, 02722, and another is private network external 2. Uh, this means that these uh, two uh, networks uh, are mm, uh, have access to the external world. There is also your data subnetwork, to which uh, if you want to have access to your uh, to satellite products from your virtual machine, then uh, you have to attach this as well. And here is another uh, sub network, which we'll not be talking about now, uh, but you can create your own sub networks as well. Uh, so I go to, and one uh, important thing, uh, I will show you the floating IPs available. Uh, this is uh, important because uh, sometimes it's easy to make mistake. You can see that uh, this in this project I have allocated already three floating IPs, which I can uh, use to attach to my virtual machines. Uh, if they are not available, then I can create uh, that is attached a new uh, I floating IPs, uh, um, but. Uh, uh, please uh, bear in mind that uh, uh, various uh, floating IPs are attached to various uh, pools. Uh, so, for instance, I can one. I have one floating IP attached to uh, that is uh, in the external pool, uh, and two in external uh, two. And uh, I will show you uh, in a moment how to attach it to, to the crea new, newly created virtual machine. Uh, the, in the important thing is that uh, if you see the networks, you can see that you have uh, three uh, networks available in, in my project. And there is external, external two and external three. So uh, you can on it, it. You can attach uh, various uh, sub networks to to your virtual machine. So now let's go to the uh, compute uh, pane and go to instances. And I will create uh, a simple. Uh, Linux, <clears throat> Linux Ubuntu virtual machine, and I will show you how to access it from also from the Ubuntu desktop, so also from Linux desktop. If you want to see uh, other configurations, because uh, generally there are, there are four uh, possibilities. You can create uh, virtual machines uh, 
uh, both Linux and uh, Windows Server uh, in our OpenStack um, uh, infrastructure. And you can access them from uh, both uh, Linux and uh, Windows. So uh, these four configurations, you can uh, see the tutorials on our YouTube channel. So if you go to our Cloudflare YouTube channel, you can see uh, the tutorials uh, how to create uh, virtual machines with uh, various configurations. We do not cover access from uh, Mac OS. Uh, however, it, uh, it can be uh, similar to uh, accessing for us from, from Linux. So coming back to instances. First, I click on uh, launch instance. And here I can, uh, first of all, uh, choose the name for, for the instance. So let's call it test uh, number five, for instance, and uh, choose source from source. Uh, source is the place where you can choose uh, which uh, image will be uh, used to create the virtual machine. So you can choose from uh, CentOS, Ubuntu, Windows Server, and uh, also we have Windows with Arc, Arc uh, GIS. Uh, however, this one you have to, um, if you want to choose the, this one, you have to do it from uh, our Creodias uh, platform because this is the paid um, uh, licensed uh, software. So let's uh, choose Ubuntu 18. I click on the arrow up and now I have the um, uh, Ubuntu image chosen. I also have other possibilities because I chose the simplest one that is create from image, but I can also choose creating the uh, virtual machine from instance snapshot from volume or volume snapshot. And uh, there is also a possibility to change the um, system disk. So if uh, the, the option by default, uh, the uh, create new volume option is chosen as no. But if I choose yes, then I can choose the size of the system, uh, system disk. So the simplest way is to, uh, to choose no, that is to agree for default uh, flavor and default disk. So now I go to flavor pane. In flavor pane, I can choose how big my virtual uh, machine will be. So uh, what, uh, how many CPUs and RAM and uh, how big the um, system disk will be. Uh, so let's choose some small machine like here, one small. Next step is to choose the network. Uh, as I showed you, uh, you can uh, choose from networks that uh, have routers uh, attached. That is a private network, uh, two private networks available here. And if you want to access uh, the EO data products, uh, uh, that is satellite products, you have to attach EO data as well. So I will choose the private network external two, and also choose uh, your data. Uh, next pay network ports is uh, you do not have to choose anything here. And the next step is security groups. Uh, here I have several security groups already defined. Uh, if you uh, register and to start using uh, our resources, you will have this group, um, security group uh, defined and others you can define yourself as well. So this one is uh, um, uh, needed if you want to uh, access uh, the 
um, the virtual machine uh, using either SSH or RDP protocol. And if you want to uh, to have to uh, that the, the VM that the virtual machine uh, responds to ping, so I add uh, this uh, security group. And uh, the last step is to add uh, keeper. Uh, in fact, you do not have to add this keeper. Uh, if you, for instance, using, uh, if you are creating the ver uh, Windows uh, machine, you do not have to use keeper because you would rather um, connect to the virtual machine using uh, RDP protocol, so remote desktop. But in case of Linux, uh, it is uh, recommended to use uh, SSH and then uh, it is necessary to, to attach this keeper. I already have several keepers uh, uh, defined here, so I can choose one. Uh, but if I do not have uh, uh, any keeper uh, defined, I can uh, create keeper using either uh, this button, create keeper or import keeper. So uh, if I click on keeper, uh, import keeper, I will, uh, I would have to uh, put uh, the public key, uh, which I create outside of this open stack. So I can create it in our, in, in my, on my desktop, for instance. In my case, I will use uh, this uh, test too, because I already have this uh, key uh, defined. So I will check on my terminal. I already created the key that uh, put in, uh, I put it, I put it on, on in my uh, keys directory. So uh, as you can see, this is the, uh, the key. So I will choose this one, test two and now click launch instance the instance is being built it takes a moment depending on the size of the uh, virtual machine okay so it is already created and as you can see it has access to two subnetworks your data and private network external two uh, so if i want to access this virtual machine from uh, the internet i need to attach floating ip uh, so i choose from this menu associate floating ip uh, I can either select uh, floating IP that is already in my project. So I, I remember that these two, uh, beginning for, with 45, uh, are the floating IPs uh, from external two network. If I try to attach the, the other one, this 185, I will have an error. So I choose the uh, this one, for instance. And uh, it is important to attach the proper to a proper port. You do not uh, attach uh, floating IP to your data subnetwork, but you need to attach it to one of the private networks. That is, these ones that have access uh, through a router to external world. So I choose this uh, port and click on associate. Okay, so now uh, you can see that the floating IP is already attached. Uh, if I go to my terminal, I can uh, check if it is responding to, to ping. So I can copy this address, go to terminal and ping. Ping is responding, so the machine is working. And if I want to... Uh, if I want to uh, connect to the machine, uh, I uh, have to uh, use the command ssh-e for inserting the 
uh, key uh, just uh, just to show you once again so there is one key already in this directories and uh, it's important that uh, the the key has proper uh, uh, rights and uh, so uh, I invoked SSH dash e uh, name of the uh, of the key and uh, the user for the default user for the uh, for the virtual machine uh, Linux virtual machine is EO user at and the um, uh, floating IP address so when I click enter I have uh, this it did not uh, connect uh, connect to to the server for the first time but this message uh, uh, shows me that uh, it notices that uh, uh, I have already been using this address before so I need to copy this line and and invoke it once again invoke it here and enter and now I can uh, uh, use the SSH command again uh, confirm yes and now I'm logged uh, I'm logged in already uh, so uh, if I want to see the um, uh, data collections I go to CD that is CD here data because uh, this um, uh, using this your data uh, subnetwork, uh, there is the, the repository is mounted to the uh, to the Linux server, and uh, if I ls now, I can see the various collections uh, of satellite uh, data. So uh, you do not need to download this data from uh, Finder, but you can access it directly here. So I will show you that, for instance, if I uh, go to Finder now, and if I uh, choose some uh, some collections, just like uh, just like uh, Claudia was showing you before, uh, just collection. For instance, Sentinel uh, Sentinel can be Sentinel too and so it can be level 2a if i search just click search i have plenty of products here and if i click on one of them uh, i can see in the metadata the product identifier and this is the path to the product on on that you can access on the virtual machine so if i copy this line here and go to uh, my instance and uh, CD uh, to this uh, uh, to this place. I can see that uh, the, I can see the products uh, that these products are available here uh, directly on uh, on the virtual machine. So uh, thank you very much uh, for taking part uh, in our uh, webinar. Um, please follow us. And uh, if you have any question, please uh, write it uh, directly to us. Um, we'll uh, try to uh, do our best and answer your questions. Uh, so Martin is a specialist of IT and cloud computing, and uh, I can uh, help you with the EO data. Uh, thank you very much and hope to see you again uh, soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.